and welcome to Real Talk with Rachel. Today I'm exploring the problem with printing calorie counts on menus. I am a survivor of anorexia. My descent into anorexia and disordered eating began in the sixth grade when I started skipping lunch. In high school, I started skipping breakfast too. Sometimes I wouldn't eat dinner, but that was harder to skip because at home I had eyes on me. But in college, the eyes disappeared and I fell hard. I would tell you my daily protocol, but I don't want to trigger anyone or give them any ideas. And besides, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Anorexia and disordered eating is a lifelong struggle for some, especially those like me who also have OCD. Throughout my life, I have slipped in and out of anorexia. My most recent slide was during the pandemic. It started with calorie counting, which quickly turned into extreme calorie counting and restriction paired with extreme long distance running. I have a brain for numbers. I was very good at math in school and aced my college math classes. And that math brain has always loved keeping track of calories like a little calculator right there in my head, announcing tallies every time I'd sit down to eat. I know the calorie counts of things, and I never forget them. I know a bowl of broccoli, which is about two cups of broccoli for me, has 30 calories. I know a pink lady apple has 72 calories. I know 10 strawberries have around 40 calories. I know my favorite item on the menu of my favorite restaurant has about 1,280 calories. I usually split that dish with my husband, but I also have baskets of chips and salsa, which run around 520 calories collectively. I can't forget these calorie counts. Because of this, when I'm not intentionally telling myself to let it go, my brain keeps a running tally of the day's calorie count in my head. This makes it incredibly hard for me to enjoy eating out anywhere. Because what do menus have on them? Calorie count. I hate looking at menus when I'm out on a date with my husband. Sometimes he orders for me because I don't want to see how many calories a dish has in it. But if I've seen it once, I already know. And some restaurants post it right up on the wall. It's impossible to miss. I understand why having calorie counts on menus is important. Lots of people are completely unaware of how many calories are in what they eat. And for those with medical issues, it can be a dangerous and risky thing. So I'm not saying we shouldn't have menus available that include all the information some might need. But on the other side, we also need to consider the people who have other dangerous medical issues like anorexia or disordered eating. I'm aware of the stigma surrounding anorexia. People sometimes say, it's so vain. Why are you so concerned with the way you look? It's actually much more complicated than that, as most mental illnesses are. So we can't just invalidate that experience by saying, well, it doesn't matter, it's not an important thing. People who struggle with anorexia can just deal with it and get therapy. I've been in therapy for years. It's not a straight line sort of recovery. I don't know that I have any new solutions. Some will probably dismiss this whole thing and say, well, just stop thinking so much about your body. Gosh, I never thought of that. Totally haven't been working on it in therapy for the last 30 years of my life. Recovery for anything is a long, difficult road. I wish it was a straight one, but it's not. And everyone's story and experience is different. There are triggers to any mental illness. Some will be triggered like me by those numbers on the menu. Some won't care. And of course we have to conduct ourselves responsibly take ourselves out of those trigger situations. But does that mean I can't eat out anymore? I mean, it would be better for my health, but I enjoy the occasional meal out. Maybe we can have separate menus for people who have a history of anorexia and disordered eating. I want to enjoy my night out with my husband without my brain beating me with guilt for choosing the 1200 calorie meal instead of the 600 calorie one. I'd like a little peace when I'm out with the people I love and enjoy. You know what restaurants don't have calorie counts printed on their menus? Any of them at Disney World, because it's the happiest place on earth. 
maybe I should live there. In all seriousness, it generally comes back to this. We need more voices at the table, raising issues from important viewpoints. We should listen to people who are affected by the decisions we make. We should respect and care for each other. And maybe that starts with alternative menus for people who would rather not have the calorie counts of their favorite meals out seared into their brains forevermore. Thanks for listening to my Real Talk. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for videos about books and writing and more videos like this. See you next time.